Ladies and gentlemen, time again for our monthly interview with Egon from Greyerz. Egon, how are you? Back in your well-known office. Yes, well, glad to be back in Zurich, uh, good old Zurich. Uh, I'm, I'm in good form, but the, uh, also uh, e eagerly awaiting, or, or uh, eagerly is maybe the wrong word, with, with apprehension awaiting what's going to happen this autumn to markets, to gold, to currencies, to interest rates. Uh, it's going to be a lot of things, you know, a lot to talk about today and in the coming months uh, between you and I. Uh, that'd be hmm. exciting and nervous times at the same time. Egon, on, on Tuesday, we saw a, a big move in the gold prices, went to 15.35. Then uh, there came some new hopes that there is the, the trade talks between the US and China will come to a good solution and gold was dumped and the stock market rose again only to drop 800 points yesterday. And the, the yield curve in the US is completely inverted now. I think we are really on the cusp or on the brink of a big, of a really major event. Yes. Uh, I mean, you know, they're now like they're playing the same games, games as always. As soon as gold goes up a bit, they're trying to push it down. And they did that uh, in the last couple of days. They tried this morning again to push gold up, but they're not succeeding. Gold is now in a strong uptrend, as, as we have discussed, since we broke the Maginot line at $1.13. 50 gold is now going to go to new highs even in dollars but but that that's you know this gone to new highs in most currencies i'm sure you have observed that we are actually at the highs in euros right now gold is now equal to the 2011 and 2012 because it was about the same level 1360 1370 gold is now at that level so gold in euros is now also uh, making new highs so And that's why you know, gold is, has made new highs in, as we discussed, many currencies. Um, and the few remaining, uh, that's not going to be any obstacle. It's just going to go straight through everything now. Uh, so, uh, and, and this autumn, a lot of this will happen, uh, combined with, as you discussed, uh, a stock market fall. I actually see, um, um, uh, as we saw, 900 points on the Dow yesterday, which is quite dramatic. And we've seen wild swings also, as you said, up and down. Um, this is a little bit like what happened in 1987 before the crash. You had these wild swings before the 1987 crash and, and, and Black Monday. Um, whether that's, you know, whether we're going to have a, now a sideways market today, which is possible after a 900 point fall, but whether we're going to have a difficult week next week, I have some cycle indications that things could start already uh, early next week on Monday. Um, I mean, I, I don't, it might, might be premature to, to forecast a, a Black Monday again, but we are ready for markets to fall. It can happen next week and it can happen later in the autumn, but we will see big falls in stock markets uh, reflecting uh, all these bubbles uh, that we have discussed uh, in all assets, John. Egon, big falls is a key word. I found in one of your recent articles an interesting um, chart or interesting graphic. I, I show it in a second. Here we have your graphic. Um, it's the Standard and Poor's Index. We can take it as a proxy for the Dow Jones. It doesn't matter. But according to this model, um, the market is still very much overvalued. And if you um, if you follow the market comments, they, they are close or even at a heart attack already after what happened yesterday. But it looks like there is still much room uh, until there is uh, a fair valuation or until a normal level. Yes, Jan. I mean, the, you know, this includes a lot of cr criteria to um, you know, the, the market value to, to, to sales, uh, market value to, to uh, earnings per share. Um, uh, to to uh, uh, multiples, uh, etc., uh, and on on this basis, the stock market is now more highly valued than eighty seven, two thousand, and two thousand and seven. So, the, this means that the potential crash will be a lot bigger than um, at those points. Of course, this is what I've been saying anyway. We, you know, the, the, the crash now is not going to be recovered by money printing now. We are going to have a fall 
that will continue and continue. Of course, there'll be high volatility and it will go up and down, but the trend will be strongly down and there will be not uh, any chance of actually repairing this market by printing more money. That game is over, Jan. The game of just printing money to save the world is over because as I've been stressing so many times, you cannot create wealth by printing money and you cannot solve a debt problem by adding more debt. And that's why they, they, they will fail this time. And, and, and um, you know, they are desperate, of course, as, as you know, with, um, uh, in the bond markets, they're desperate with the low interest rates, Jan. Um, uh, and the U.S. is now clearly indicating that they will lower rates too, like only a quarter percent so far. Everyone is now anticipating that also the U.S. will go to negative rates. We have $15 trillion today in negative rates. Uh, that will increase dramatically uh, in coming months. But, you know, just imagine what's happening. Governments that are bankrupt can never repay the money. Are, are issuing bonds at negative rates and who the hell is buying these uh, bonds? Because, you know, if, if your pension fund or my pension fund manager put those negative bonds into our pension funds, first of all, we'll have a negative uh, return on the pension fund. And sec secondly, it's scandalous because we know that they can never repay it. So, I mean, you know, no, nobody should buy these bonds with a negative return. Um, and in the end, it would just be governments buying them. And that will, of course, lead to, Jan, as we have discussed, that will lead to the collapse of the, of the debt market uh, and eventually then rates going in, into hyperinflationary levels of 20% or more. But before that, we will have maybe a year or, or two, maybe even of low. Egon, the, the key message of our video today um, is what happens during uh, or with the stock markets in a total money destruction. And in Germany, we have uh, unfortunately good experience with that. I found very interesting uh, graphics and data. Um, first of all, I show our audience the, uh, the, the stock index. Uh, in, back in times, we had the, the Berlin stock market. Frankfurt was, was not existing. Um, I show this graphic. Here we see um, the Aktien index from Berlin from the statistic, uh, Statistischen Reichsamt. And this is in paper market, uh, paper mark. You see from 1917, it went to, uh, I think it's 10 quadrillion, a trillion or quadrillion. So it's so many uh, zeros, you even couldn't, couldn't count, hardly count it. And um, if you see this, um, you could... It's 10, it's 10 trillion, I think, yeah, in, in English, yeah, milliarden. Trillion, okay, yes. Uh, you can get the impression that, uh, that holding stocks would probably a good, a good way to uh, protect oneself from uh, losing your whole savings. But um, if you look a bit deeper, the stocks were uh, increasing in nominal values during this a disastrous time of total money destruction in Germany. But um, if you measure it against the real proxy, and this was gold, it looks totally different. And that's the key point. Yeah. This is the message for our video today, Egon. I, I, I wish our audience to look very carefully at this uh, chart. The um, statistics, uh, the imperial... Um, uh, Bureau of Statistics, they calculated this uh, stock index in gold, in gold mark. They started this in 1922 and calculated it back until 1913. So they started, it started with hundreds in 1913 and the money destruction um, led to a loss of 97.28%. I will provide uh, the, the um, sources and the data below the video for everybody to look uh, itself. But you see here what rose dramatically in nominal values, lost nearly its complete value in real terms of gold. Yeah. Jan, may, may I 
point out something here. Uh, you, you're uh, absolutely right that you know the the uh, the, the market uh, in Germany. You know there were stocks that went went up in nominal terms, not in inflation adjusted terms, but they went up. But the Weimar Republic was very unique from the point of an in hyperinflationary period because the German industry uh, continued to work and continued to export. Uh, uh, and and uh, people were, there was virtual, virtually full employment. So this was a, an, an economy that still survived because of the exporting companies could continue uh, to prosper. Uh, in the in the coming hyperinflationary period in the world, it'll every country will suffer, and, and and every country will have hyperinflation, and there will be no market to send sell your goods to. So it'll be a lot worse, and and I would expect in the next period of hyperinflation in the world, uh, stock markets won't go up at all uh, because all the companies will suffer so much. The normal. The normal pattern, and that's why Weimar isn't typical. Normal pattern is in, in, in hyperinflation periods, stocks first go up and then they collapse. Uh, and I think that's what we're going to see now because a lot of companies will fail in, in the coming period. You know, we're seeing it, we're seeing the downturn starting in Germany, we're seeing this downturn starting in, in the US, we're seeing it in, in America. But you know, really, our message should be, Jan, that the world is now living under a massive risk of, of debt uh, uh, that will uh, collapse and of markets that will collapse. And people who want to have some money left at the end of this have to take some measures and have to own gold, which is the only wealth preservation asset there is. And if you own gold, um, that uh, physical gold that you hold yourself, of course, it's unencumbered. I mean, and there's no one else's liability. Everything else, if you have paper money or money in the bank or whatever, there's always, or, or bonds, there's always somebody else's liability. Gold is the only asset you can hold and it's yours and no one else can have a claim on it as long as you hold it in physical form and as long as you hold it outside the banking system. So that's why, you know, gold is unique and that, you know, in every period, of crisis or hyperinflation, gold has always been uh, the right asset to hold uh, for wealth preservation purposes. So, so that's what people have to think about if they want to have some money left after what's coming next. Mm. Egon, that would, would be a very good final statement, but I have to throw in some numbers to shock our audience before we close. I just checked the um, uh, the market capitalization of the US stocks, and this is around 75 uh, trillion dollars and the global bond market is over a hundred trillion and uh, so we can probably post together 200 trillion those are numbers they are completely uh, out of any uh, reality and uh, on the other hand we have uh, i saw a while ago a number of 20,000 tons of gold would be available for investment or so that's uh, uh, a value of uh, 80, 880 uh, million or billion. So we have a relationship of 200 to 1, and uh, those are not even all asset classes that shows us the, the mis, um, mispricing, and uh, there will be an incredible flight into this scarce metal. Well, you know what, uh, Jan? The, as you say, let's say we have 200 trillion of, of assets just in, in bonds and stocks. Mm. Uh, but, and my theory is very simple. What has achieved that is debt and printed money. And if you think about it, the world has a, a total global debt of about 250 trillion. That's all money that, that has no value. That is actually a zero value because there have been no, nothing produced to actually um, uh, get that that money, you know, there hasn't been been the, uh, nothing sold. They haven't produced any goods. They haven't produced any services. Just printed the money, and that's not what money is meant to be. So this money that's been printed out of out of thin air, in my book, has no value, uh, and therefore the assets that have been backed by this uh, debt, that, that which is two hundred trillion, 
doesn't have any value either. So when, when the money collapses and the asset market collapses, the value of all the goods and services, um, uh, sorry, and, and all the assets uh, in the world will also collapse. So you will have the, you know, everything, your house that is now worth, let's say 500 uh, or, or 1,000 euros uh, is now going to go down to maybe 50 or, 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 or even 5,000 euros. And that's going to be the same with all the assets. People don't understand it. People don't uh, believe it. But I promise you in the next five, seven years, that's going to happen. I'm talking about in real terms, not in inflationary terms, in real terms. But as you used to say, Egon, we also see the good here. There are chances and uh, we can only hope that people use the time that is remaining. If they followed our videos for a longer time and they did something, they uh, should be really happy and it's still time. The gold price is not high. I can only say do the right thing. And Egon, that's so far for today. I'm sure next time we have to talk about other exciting developments and probably at a much higher gold price. Good luck. Yeah. Till next time. Thank you. Jan. Yeah, we're going to see we're going to see a lot of movement, as we said. So uh, we will have enough to talk about. I'm sure about that. Uh, so just people go out and protect yourself, and then, as I always say, enjoy life. Life is you know, don't be a pessimist. Absolutely. Enjoy what you have. Uh, that's important. Yes. Till next time, Egon. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.